Uh, Kristen, you've been uh, looking into why cultural institutions are, let's say, reluctant to share sometimes. Yes. What have you found? Um, well, in an uh, IMLS-funded study where I surveyed over a hundred-something museums, archives, and libraries, I found that there were three major reasons that they were hesitant about sharing or um, allowing others to reuse their um, collections. And the first one was a kind of a general concern with control and reuse and what uh, people were going to be doing with their objects, um, how those objects might be re-represented. If someone's reusing something, they're re-representing it in that way. So sort of the frame around the object is different and how will that change in frame change people's interpretation of the object? It might be framed in a, in a negative way when they, as a cultural institution, meant to frame it in a neutral or scholarly way. So the of course, of my reaction is boo-hoo, but you know, that's... that's <laughs> right? Okay. But you want to, you know, the goal is to understand yes, so that understand. you can work with these institutions more. <laughs> and then description was a, uh, a, a surprisingly large concern that um, not only might people, you know, copy your picture and repost it on their local history blog, but that they would get the description wrong. And that that in and of itself was sort of uh, problematic, that incorrect data is out there. But also it caused more practical problems for these institutions that say if someone saw the picture and wanted to use it in a book, that they might accidentally reuse the incorrect information instead of going and getting the authoritative information, which means it ends up published in a book, which is bad. But also that if the person wanted to contact, say, the archive to get the correct information, um, they might be on a bit of a wild goose chase and it might take them longer to get to the correct rights person to find out about reuse of the material. So that was one reason, this general concern with description, re-representation, reuse. The second area was more the legal issues. And there were three main legal issues. The first was um, essentially what permissions were given by the donor. So a lot of people don't realize a lot of cultural materials are donated by private individuals to archives, museums, libraries. And those donations typically come with certain terms and conditions. Like, for instance, I give you rights to this my photograph collection, but it can never be shown outside the archive. Or it has to only be used for scholarly purposes. And so the fact that you know, they made, uh, they accepted those terms and conditions mean they have to enforce them to a certain extent. And that causes all sorts of complications that in many cases they would love to allow people to reuse it, but they just can't because of the original terms and conditions of the donation, which were made way before the web ever existed, before people even thought, oh my god, someone might want to do this. So that's a huge problem, it's just those donor conditions. And then, of course, there are the fun legal issues associated with, with copyright, which I think when people are more familiar with the major problem for uh, cultural institutions being the orphan works problem. That there's a lot of material that's out there that the copyright just isn't known, no one's exploiting it, but it's somewhat risky to digitize and republish because the rights owner is not known and it can't be proven that um, there's that a rights owner doesn't exist out there. And then there are certain privacy laws in addition that people are less familiar with but that museums, um, archives, and libraries have to pay attention to. An interesting one that was explained to me was uh, recently there's been a lot of donations of diaries and personal papers where other third parties might be named. So imagine, say, your cousin donates this personal papers to the such and such archive, and your cousin has written rather scurrilous things about you in so you've the met diary. My cousin. And uh, and you, as that third party, you have no rights. You have you can't say anything about that diary and what's done to it. But you should be thankful that the archive is sensitive to your situation. That is a third party actor who has is written about in this diary that they're sensitive to your privacy needs. So for a lot of things, they don't digitize or they, they don't want others, they don't want to share with others because of the sort of concern for these innocent third parties that happen to be named in these materials. Which seems to apply to particular classes of, of media. Yes, particular classes of media. That's just one example though. There are also some other privacy issues related to different types of material, but privacy is a general concern. And then the third issue was a concern with getting credit. And you can think of two forms of credit, uh, you know, social credit, social capital, and uh, physical credit. And in terms of social capital, 
cultural institutions are interested in getting positive social capital. And one of the main ways they get positive social capital is by showing use, that they can go to donors, that they can go to funders and say, X million of people you know, went to our website and we had 5,000 requests for use of this photograph in movies and books last year. And so tracking use and being able to say how many people wanted to use a cultural institute, uh, an item that was digitized is important. And uh, so they're sort of afraid that if they stop asking people, if they stop asking for permission or requesting permission as part of this, that they'll lose that ability to track use and get social capital. And that's a problem I'm hoping someone will develop a, a fix for. There's been discussion about perhaps using some kind of forensic watermarking to kind of track use in the wild with spiders and things. So I think... Because, of course, they lose... Uh, by limiting access. Exactly, like, right. If it was free use, access so. and they could track it in the wild in some way, then they could probably show even more use than before. So, uh, like the the, um, <clears throat> the Powerhouse Museum people that are here are supposedly doing some experiments in that area. I haven't been able to ask them about it. So Australia. Yeah. And uh, then there's a the negative capital. So, cultural institutions are very concerned about people doing embarrassing things with their stuff. That you take, again, take their photos photograph and do something nasty with it that it catches a lot of attention and then they inadvertently get blamed for having made that thing available for you to do your nasty thing with it. And the, the Hitler mustache on the, or, yeah, you know. This, mustache the, right. and the Mona Lisa, you right. know, whatever. So they're afraid of, of kind of catching bad um, negative reaction, negative publicity from other people's misuse of their stuff. And that also feeds into the financial credit in the sense that if they're not seen as responsible stewards, you know, if they've been if they've gotten bad press, they're not responsible stewards, they're less likely to get donations of, you know, funds, materials, maybe the granting agencies don't shine on them quite as much. So they're all sort of, you know, the social and the financial credit are sort of linked together. But those are the three main things that control over descriptions and representations is one, the legal issues, the more straight up legal issues were two, and then the uh, social and financial credit was the third major reason. And you've written this up in First Monday. First Monday, yep, uh, November 2010. Great, so this is a first step to understanding how to um, assuage some fears and perhaps... Absolutely, yeah, I began the project, you know, very much kind of an open knowledge, open information advocate, but, uh, you know, got into this very quickly and realized a lot, there's a lot of locked down museum, uh, library, and archive collections. Or not, they're not locked down in the sense that you, you can go look at them, but you can't actually do much with them or getting the permissions to do anything with them seem onerous and confusing and you know a lot of this is public material in the sense that we as taxpayers pay for it so it just seems as though it should have been easier and I would be wondering why. Why is it so onerous? Why are they so conservative? And so this paper was an attempt to kind of understand that and hopefully to you know promote reasonable and responsible change within the profession to um, get the profession to move towards offering more open content, but in a very responsible way. And to make people realize, too, that there are real barriers of responsibility that cultural institutions face, that they can't make everything open. There are real ethical and legal issues at play. Thank you very much. Thank you.